Uh, Sarah? <laughs> okay. Sarah uh, uh, went to our uh, city council and uh, presented why we should become a compassionate city. We have a very toxic council uh, and ready for municipal elections coming up soon. So she did a great job and uh, they did vote to have uh, Richmond Hill sign the charter. We need a new council, just the term of council to come in and they're working at doing that. So I'm very, very excited about that uh, opportunity. Uh, we um, are planning something, Heather and I and Sarah and a couple of others, we're at, uh, we have a peace garden in um, Richmond Hill, not well known. Heather and Sarah, they, no one but me had ever been there before. It's an absolutely amazing place. Can't wait to share pictures with you, Marilyn and Merida. Um, it just, so many symbols of whatever. It's part of a Hindu temple, though it's actually run by a colonel, um, white guy, Baptist guy. So it just, good in so many ways. Uh, so yeah, I, I really am, I, I am being part of the Charter for Compassion is something that um, has really made me feel good. I'm really looking forward to where it can go. And I feel like I'm still sort of waiting, trying to figure out what I'm doing. But um, yeah, so I've talked enough. Okay, great. <laughs> so, Thanks, so I, I wonder if, if we'll keep it in Richmond Hills and we can go to Heather um, because, you know, at least the drive's not so long. Because, you know, they're going <laughs> two hours out to Richmond Hills. So. Well, thank you. And hi, everyone. Um, I'm, my name's Heather Skoll. Um, I joined the group because I felt like, you know, I certainly can get around um, anything that has to do with compassion and peace, uh, something that is easy to easy for me to, to get on to. And I think I joined the call just now, Marilyn, when you were saying that there's been a lot of um, opposition. And I think that when you do something good and it's very good, then it's really when the shadow starts to show up. Mm -hmm. So it, it's unfortunate that it's like a um, the dark side of, of the, the good that you're doing and just realize that it's just part of the whole. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so I do live in Richmond Hill currently. I've been here for 26 years and I announced to Marge and my group that I will be moving in about four or five months because my children who have children and we're expecting another all the grandchildren are all about an hour and a bit away um, in Guelph and we're moving out that way. So rather than getting upset, I said I'm going to stay part of the York Region group until the time when I can Get to know people in that area and perhaps spread mm -hmm. compassion okay, and so where are you, that way. where are you moving and so on, yeah i'm moving right near guelph i'll just put that in the chat um yeah. but the actual um it's it's the county of wellington but i'm actually moving to a town called pus lynch i think that's how you say it Pushlink, isn't okay. it? Yeah. Pushlink. 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 Guelph is has an incredible reputation, doesn't it, for compassion? Um, it's not a compassionate community, but there is a um, a patron, I think, of sorts, uh, who has been doing a lot of really excellent work. Um, and you know, I've often thought that I would like to write to them and say, "Wow, you know." <laughs> there's so much compassion going on in your community. Have you thought about maybe, uh, you know, kind of joining the Charter for Compassion? Uh, so now we're going to put that on you as an assignment. Uh, you'll have to Google, but I, you know, it's, I think it's a wealthy industrialist. And I'm trying to remember exactly what he was doing. I think it was resettling refugees and really giving them uh, an opportunity uh, you know, to begin life in, uh, anew. And do look it up. And I, I think that would be outstanding yeah. if we could uh, you know, get 
recognize more communities, not necessarily for communities to try and register to become compassionate communities, but um, a willingness from the Charter for Compassion or the you know Canadians for Compassion to say, "Wow, you know, you're doing exactly what needs to be done, and you know, we want to give you the designation of a compassionate community." So something to think about. Donald, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to you because you were the first one on. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm, I live in Barrie, Ontario. I came here about six years ago to take care of my mother. The last 18 years I've spent taking care of family members. So I took care of my dad and my older brother. Uh, they both died in my arms. And my oh. middle brother just passed away last mm -hmm. year from COVID. Oh. Uh, my mom right now, the home, I had to put her in home, unfortunately, but she's uh, uh, right now uh, in out there, the foam's an outbreak, half the residents have uh, COVID at this, uh, as we speak. So I'm a little uh, tense. So, uh, you know, but anyway, um, as far as compassion work goes, one of the things that I noticed that when I was here was that the, in my travels through the healthcare system in three different provinces and so on and dealing with all the different things like that. That was what was missing in our healthcare system, I felt. So I got very, very, very much involved in healthcare. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm a co-chair of the Varian Area Ontario Health Team. I was uh, chairman of the, uh, the first um, um, anti-racism task force here in Barrie. Um, <laughs> and 15 other different com committees and, and, and things like that. And trying to bring this idea of compassion. I remember in one of the, the meetings that I was in with, um, uh, there must've been 60 people there. Of course, they're all medical people. So they, this medical speak, um, I'm just a regular average guy. <laughs> if I could navigate these things. But um, that was what was missing. And I remember when we had our big discussion and they said, well, what do you want? You know, uh, you know this the the, the 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 health team to look like, and I says, well, everybody understands what empathy is, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is compassion, yeah. and it was sorely missing, especially when I saw how the treatment of my mother and a lot of this stuff is still going on. And being active in that has led to a lot of different things. When long term, when those long term, when that um, legislation was changed for long term care. I was on that emergency task force. Mm. So I brought that, as a matter of fact, compassion was the very first thing that I brought up. I said, I think what had happened was they were all talking about their little organizations and their associations and all that. And I think, are we forgetting why we're really here? Mm. We're here for the residents of long-term care. We're here for people. We're not here for groups and all that kind of stuff. So of course there was a hush in the crowd. So when you throw that word out there, uh, people do quiet because they don't know how to respond when to me that's our default I mean we're born with empathy we have to develop compassion I believe but we're born with a good part of that so that's basically what I've been doing so I've been you know and I also write an opinion piece every once in a while for uh, one of uh, for Tor Star one of Toronto Star's uh, small papers and um mm -hmm. And that's always a compassionate led as well. Matter of fact, they just asked me to do one on municipality uh, elections that are coming up. And I'm thinking I have to find a way to get this focused on compassion because that is sorely missing in our uh, uh, a lot of these institutions and, and things that are here. So. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you, you bring to mind uh, a couple stories immediately. One, if you go to the... Um, to the website, the charter website, and under communities, and you can see, uh, you know, the, the various communities around the world. Uh, if you would go to Pomona um, in California, they're the only city so far in their affirmation of the Charter for Compassion that they've included civility that oh, they, yes. they are requiring civility in their city council in discussions. And so you might get some ideas from that, but um, you know how I uh, gave Heather an assignment? I wanna give you a double assignment. 
And Gary, mm -hmm. watch out because you're going to get three when I call on you. <laughs> but the double assignment is it would be wonderful if you would think of joining the charter team uh, of volunteers, lead volunteers, because we've been doing a lot of work with um, a guy from the UK, his name is Dr. Julian Abel, and he um, has a reputation and also a lot of experience in palliative care primarily. Um, and he has a program called Compassion and Communities, which is not to be confused with us, but at the same time, we have been joining together uh, in meetings and in work and um, there's a small group in Canada in Northern United States that are uh, in conversation with Julian. And I would love for you to, you know, to maybe be involved with that group uh, just because of the fact that I think that you have the background. So that's, that's one assignment. The second assignment is if you write opinion pieces, we would love you to contribute to our newsletter as an, uh, someone who's a guest uh, writer. And so think about um, you know, what you're writing for compassion communities or for the elections or whatever it might be. And maybe you can retool that so that we can use it for our newsletter. Well, my big one right now, the big focus for me is seniors. So okay. uh, that's I, yeah. So I, I and the, to, to stay in that, I, I actually work part-time as a home care worker okay. uh, and with people with mild to moderate uh, decline. Um, so being around, and I just entered that glorious club myself. Uh, I just turned 66 last April, the day after the legislation and the law was changed for long-term care. So <laughs> it was sort of a double celebration, I guess. Okay. Very good. Yeah. I, I do have, I, I said I had a story and the story is something that happened in 2019 is the last time I really traveled right at the end of the year before COVID started. Um, I was in Australia and I was in a hospital and having a meeting with some of the doctors because they had just finished a course a couple months prior to my coming on compassion and compassionate care. Mm. And the doctor uh, that was in the meeting said, I want to share this story after having, you know, the course in compassionate care and thinking about, you know, what did that really mean? I'm an emergency doctor. And he said, it, it happened soon after I finished the course. Um, I was in the emergency room and um, two people brought in their mother and she was elderly. She was 90, I think, or in that age range. And, um, you know, I took her back in uh, to the emergency room and I knew that she didn't have long to live. Um, and I said to her, and I would have never done this before, but I said to her, what do you want? And she said, I want to go home and I want to die at home. And he said, okay, I'm going to help you. So he went out to talk to the two people who brought her in and said, your mother's very ill and her wish is that she wants to go home. And they were like, they were so upset. They wanted her to be admitted. They wanted her to have, you know, the best care. Um, and he said, you know, don't you want to give her what she is asking for? And he said, I took the time, we had the conversation. She went home, she died two days later and they called me and thanked me. And so, you know, I think that what you're doing is marvelous, Donald, um, because, you know, it takes so little uh, with compassion training for people in the medical profession. Um, and in the long run, it saves, uh, you know, people stress, pain, um, anxiety, stress, you know, just everything that you can think of. And it's just a few minutes extra of time at the moment, but in the long run, it's a gain of a lot of time. So thank you for everything you're doing. Okay, who should we go? Can I just add something quick to that? Because I always think about, because I do work in not only yoga, but a type of therapy work. And we talk about treatment, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes the best treatment is compassion. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's why in, in our medical system, that's the big thing that I push it. So what they use the word palliative, yeah. which already contains a compassion component, 
Mm -hmm. So that's now part, that's the main thread now that I push. And as a matter of fact, as a result of that, I've been asked to be on the International, Found International Foundation for Integrated Care. So mm -hmm. now my work has just gone international. Yeah, great. I haven't decided whether I'll take the seat or not, but <laughs> because they want me to be on the board, I don't know. <laughs> that's well, a big one. Are to be consumed, yeah. That's a big one, yeah. <clears throat> Harry, you were next. You came in with your earth and clay wall behind you, I think. Um, Good, thank you, Marilyn. What's happening yeah, in Calgary? Yeah, so I, I'm actually in, in Winnipeg. Are oh, you okay. you're saying Stephanie? Yeah, if you want me to go, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so I'm in Winnipeg and uh, I've had a, a fairly long association with Marilyn and uh, Compassion and I come through it to it uh, sort of through the word peace. So uh, I'm involved with a group that we call um, uh, the Winnipeg Rotary Peace Builders Committee. And um, I'm the only non-Rotarian co-chair uh, of a, a Rotarian committee, I think in Winnipeg, <laughs> but uh, we, we've done work for about 12 years and we're continuing to do it. So we're doing a festival this period right now that we're in. Uh, so I'd invite you all just for fun to look at peacedays.ca and go to the calendar of events. And you'll see that we have a number of interesting webinars that are coming up uh, or are being held in the next few days. And uh, Marilyn, I think you were talking about the Forgiveness Project and, and you were saying uh, that the one out of England with Maria? Mm -hmm. Marina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marina, yeah. And do you have a reading or something coming up, you said? We, we had a reading last month. Uh, it was our global book. Uh, but people who were a part of that asked if we would continue the conversation. And so we are going to uh, continue it. Um, uh, uh, Merida just put up the link. Uh, it's the first. Um, I'll put it in again because maybe Gary came in after I put it up. You so. might want to put in the day and time as well. Okay. Well, you, and yeah. would it be okay, Marilyn? You know, you know how in the past we've had a few of your events on our calendar. Oh yeah, to, to promote them. Yes. So so we'd we'd love to do that. In fact, interestingly. Uh, I was just working on an event with Louisa Hex, who's the U.S. representative for the Forgiveness Project. Mm -hmm. And we were going to ho host the exhibition up here at uh, St. Boniface Cathedral. But um, it's that's not coming together. So we're going to do it uh, probably next summer or so. Yeah. But um, so I'll be short. I, I, I um, am very interested in compassion and what we can do. Winnipeg's a very interesting city, has a lot happening. Including, including the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Um, I would encourage you to also look at the uh, Conflict and Resilience Research Institute of Canada. Uh, Dr. Kauser is a fellow I work with, and we do a lot of webinars on um, almost what Marilyn was talking about earlier, disinformation and, and sort of the bad guys out there and trying to represent the good guys. And um, we're also doing a lot of work on Ukraine so tonight mm -hmm. at eight o'clock, uh, there'll be a webinar on a project, an art project that we're doing in Ukraine um, with an organization called Make Music Matter that uh, uses music for trauma relief. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so we, we have quite a few things going on and I won't take more time, but I encourage you to look at peacedays.ca and we're in Canada, our little group. If there's anything we could do to help you or, or if you wanna share any of our webinars around, please feel free. And uh, I always look forward to collaborating with Marilyn in any way we can. Yeah, and in fact, uh, Gary was involved with my first tack, which he probably doesn't even know, because I had um, I had agreed to help with um, a lecture series, and I was um, I had started an email to these wonderful people like Imam Malik uh, to represent the Muslim community uh, from Sound Vision and my good friend, John Palakowski, who I've known for years, who's the Dean at uh, the, uh, the Catholic Theological Union. And um, I was on a meeting and my, uh, my email was up and all of a sudden someone took control of my, my mouse. And so they were going over the names of all these prestigious interfaith leaners. And so I got out of that really quickly and um, I had to I had to contact them all and say, you are about to be hacked. 
on behalf yeah. of the Charter for Compassion. So, um, so Gary, I'll always remember you for that. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Dawn. Well, it's just an honor to hear from everybody here. It's so delightful. And Gary, I'm sorry, our paths have not crossed. So um, I actually lived in Winnipeg for um, you know some odd years, just retired from a 30 year career in healthcare as part of a founding organization, uh, the Catholic Health Corporation of Manitoba, who oh, had Dan created- Lucier. Yeah, so I worked um, for Dan and uh, Michelin St. Hilaire and I uh, created the Compassion Project, which had a, had a 10 year um, hiatus, a 10 year run. Um, I'm a teacher of compassion cultivation training um, and also mindful self compassion. Uh, and um, yeah, so since I retired, I saw this come through. You know, I've been reading things in the newsletter and working at the front lines and um, thought I'd join in today and say hello to everybody because I'm now living in a little town just outside of Winnipeg called Niverville. Oh, yeah. and I thought maybe there would be some traction for Niverville to become a compassionate community since it's smaller and uh, it's not so complicated. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big saying hello. It's so nice to meet you because if I recall, I wasn't here at the time, but I think that uh, that your group was one of the first partners to the Charter for Compassion. I yeah. think you're right, Marilyn. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. I'm so glad that you came. And any help that we can give uh, about, um, you know, becoming a Compassion City would really, we could have a one-on-one -on -one and, and talk about that. Merida could, could join in as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I see Barbara Kaufman. Barbara, are you really there? Barbara's not from Canada, but she's really close as far as the United States goes. Uh, she's in Wisconsin. And uh, so thank you for coming today. Hi, yeah, my, my connection's a little unstable, so I'm, I, but I want to hang out and listen because I think Canada's doing a really good job with um, working with the Indigenous, and I just wanted to hear what was going on in Canada, so I'm yeah. listening. I've been with the Charter like 10 years, Marilyn, or more, more than 10 years. Yeah, and I'm a writer, so I'm just going to hang out and listen. Okay, great. And, and Marge, uh, you know, the next time York has a, a meeting, because York always seems to have representation from the Indigenous community, and that's a big concern with him. So mm -hmm. come to one of those meetings as well. And then Merida, yeah. go, ahead, go ahead, Marge, were you going to say no, something? I, please, uh, a lot's happening. Um, I don't know if it's in the United States, but in Canada, Canada? at least in Ontario, and tell me if it happened in Manitoba, but September 30th is a Truth and Reconciliation Day, Orange Shirt Day. Is that happening in outside of Ontario? Yeah, we, we do uh, that Orange Shirt Day as well in Manitoba. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it is a national day. Sorry, I'm, I should yeah, know. No, that. it is, and I know that our, our compassionate community up in Sioux, um, in um, you know British Columbia, uh, always mm -hmm. talk about that as well. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot, uh, there's actually a lot happening here. I had the local reporter ask me, well, what's happening? What's this town city doing for that? So she got a long email from me about all the different initiatives that are actually happening. So uh, yeah, I feel like we're doing well. I'm, I'm part of a speaker series and we have someone coming in speaking about you know, the issues with land acknowledgements and how to write a treaty and all those. It's, it is complicated. Thank you. And then there's Merida from our staff. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> and I'm in Mexico. So <laughs> we're, we're doing a great you know, trip through North America. That's OK. Uh -huh. We have free trade, right? So we've yeah. got US, uh -huh. Canada, and Mexico. Let's make yes. a deal. <laughs> we'll all be compassionate. Yes. That's a Let's deal. all be compassionate. So yeah. yeah, so I'm I've been with the charter for four months and uh, nearly five now. And so I'm just very happy to be hearing uh, everything that's happening. And then I'll also you can always contact me if you need any help with the web page or putting anything on our website or um, <clears throat> anything you want us to share for you. So well, one thing that um, I've asked Merida if she would share, 
um, is, you know, we have a big gala coming up um, November 12th, and it's our major fundraiser. And, you know, sometimes we forget it's our fundraiser because we get so excited about what we're trying to accomplish on, on uh, the gala. Uh, we, we work to recognize people who are exemplar in their fields. Um, we haven't made the announcement of who the people are yet. We've been trying to build it up in the newsletter. Um, so we have a few more weeks before we make the announcement, but we're calling uh, the awardees this, this year, the Architects of Justice. Um, and each one of, we have three individuals that we're honoring and one uh, organization. And they are all truly architects of justice. And uh, so we have the gala page up. We are going to, um, in the next newsletter, announce that the tickets are going to be available. We would love to have all of you be a part of this. We don't want to exclude anyone. Uh, and if you could share that information, uh, the, the least amount that someone could pay uh, just because of, of the service that we work with is $5, but our ticket price um, is listed and um, uh, our, our, our primary speaker, and he will not speak for more than five minutes, is, um, is someone that is really well known, Rick Hansen. Um, and Rick will um, be kind of right at the forefront of what we're doing. If people saw the gala last year, you know that it's as much about um, music around the world and celebrating people uh, and, and what their, um, their interests are um, and their work has been. And you can see that in addition to Rick Hansen, there's Tracy Kidder, uh, who is a wonderful writer um, and who will be giving out one of the awards uh, during the ceremony. So we are, <laughs> we've been working on this for months and we continue to work on it every single day. But one of the things that um, uh, Merida is going to, <laughs> to let you know that there are a few question marks um, that are there so that people can uh, you know, begin the process. If you really come to the website periodically and you begin to look at people who are presenters or maybe people who are doing the entertaining, we're still gonna start working on that. Uh, you might begin to, to guess who the recipients are. Um, but the other thing that we wanted to alert you to is the gala gallery it's hard to say it's a you know global gala gallery alliteration uh at its best and one of the things that we're trying to do is to um to look at the issue of sustainability how is it that a nonprofit might be able to look to sustaining itself um in you know, as, as a business, but we thought, geez, one of the things that we would like to do, maybe you could show the artist, is to work with artists um, as a gallery. And we wanna, we're going to open our gallery in October before uh, the event um, and work it as a true gallery, 50-50 for the artists, the same way as if they went to another gallery uh, to show their work. And if it, you know, if it uh, comes to fruition that maybe this is a good idea, we might go beyond uh, the gala to keep this going. And so, you know, every day, uh, I think today we must have added two or three artists and every day it seems like uh -huh. we're doing the same thing. And you can click on any one of the artists. Our featured artist this year is a really, she by herself is an architect for justice. Uh, she is, um, Zahava Sorez, and Zahava uh, is um, born in Argentina, uh, lived most of her life in Israel, came to the United States and lives now in Chapala, Mexico. Um, and her, her pieces are incredible. We've used her painting as the background. Uh, there's an incredible artist statement here about um, this project that she's involved in right now, which is, a, in, is called Embodied Light. Um, and, you know, we're trying hard to find items that, 
utilitarian items. We're even looking into food artists. Uh, uh, and so we're going from probably $50 to, I don't know, I think I know that we're up to 4,000 for some of the pieces, but, um, you know, we're just kind of hoping. So if you could spread the word, uh, it's going to be 90 minutes of the show itself, of the awardee show. Um, but we are going to have uh, a 30 minute program before of just music. Uh, but we'll be incorporating music uh, throughout uh, the whole the whole event. So please do visit us um, and see. And Marge has helped us find some artists um, and, you know, as, when you go through and you click on each artist and get their bio, you'll see that they're truly beginning to represent the globe. Um, and we're excited about that. And we hope the longer we do this, the more people that we would get uh, from different communities in the world. Yeah, I was very pleased to see that Larch Daybreak, um, I just have oh. very much a soft spot for them. Uh, that they are participating. I just think that's that's what we're all about. Yeah. So I'm hoping people can um, you know, learn a little bit about com uh, the uh, Larsh and the amazing yeah, you know, passion uh, they show. Do people know about Larsh? I think if you could spend just a minute on Larsh, because I have kind of yeah, a follow-up um, to that. Yeah, Larsh uh, is an international organization started in France. The first one, second one was in Richmond Hill, so more than 50 years ago. And they uh, look after, um, they and those individuals, adults with intellectual and physical disabilities. And they do it in such a very compassionate way. And they so much is that th those individuals that were historically cast off and seen as worthless now are giving so much. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being knowing these these two people and many more, and they have such a, a warm heart, and their art is just. But um, it's incredible. I, yeah. You know, especially, I mean, I I'm drawn to I am King, uh, because of the fact that it's so much like art that comes out of a movement that I adore called the Cobra Movement. That is uh, people from Copenhagen and, you know, each one of those letters, uh, Brussels uh, and gosh, what is the O for? Rotterdam and Amsterdam. But um, so it's a whole group of artists. And this could be a Cobra painting that you would like say, oh, I, I want to have that on my wall. And it's just <laughs> incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I but saw it, it's I done. Was, oh, such heart uh, is in there, and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just feel very. I, I just it makes me feel good that they are getting this exposure, but also that more people are learning about them. I just, uh, yeah. So I I hope all of you, um, Barry up in Barry, um, Don, if you can. Ch I don't know if there's one up in Barry, but please check it out. It's just it's um. They have lessons learned in how to treat people well. People who are in need uh, have a lot to give. Yeah. You know, one other, one other thing, and I, I said that kind of in response to Larch, uh, is that, and this only happened yesterday, I got an introduction to uh, a documentarian from Israel. And uh, I was sent three of his um, trailers uh, for films that he has done. And one of the films uh, so reminded me of Larch and the people mm. they work with. And so I wrote back to him immediately. He's an award, Sundance um, mm -hmm. he, he has a lot of recognition from various festivals. And one of the stories uh, could be kind of a compendium to Larch and vice mm. versa. And I said that in my email. And just before I came on here, I got another email from him and he said he wanted an introduction to Larch. So um, I, I think that, that, that that's yeah. the, the charter work. Yes. It's a network. Yeah, um, yeah it is. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. So mm -hmm. I know that, you know, a couple of you have already experienced our, um, our map, our co-creators map. 
And, um, you know, I, I would like to, uh, for people who haven't it, have it, uh, Barbara, I will write this, this filmmakers, uh, I see that you, you ask who he is. He has an incredible Jewish name. I'm the last name, the last, his last name is Nir, N-I-R, his first name. I can't remember offhand how to spell it exactly, but I will look it up. Uh, and, and send it to you, but maybe you're pretty resourceful. You might be able to find NIR. Um, and I think, uh, Merida, if you could, yeah, with Canada, you can see Canada's exploding in the York region. And our map mm -hmm. of co-creators is, you know, as I just mentioned, networking, that's what this map is about. But instead of, you know, just the charter being involved in the networking, it's really for people who have a passion about something to, you know, take on networking in their own way. And so we're hoping we introduced this map about six weeks ago now um, of trying to get hundreds of thousands of people eventually onto this map, because you might be able to find people who have the same kind of passion that you have uh, down the street from where you live. And if you keep blowing this up, you'll be able to see your street name on here um, or regionally or internationally. So I'm, I'm wondering if somebody here who isn't already on the map would be willing to take a chance today and get themselves registered. Um, and I don't know if there is anyone uh, who would be willing to do that. Oh, uh, Gary, it's Gary Merrill, sure. Okay, Gary. Uh, so uh, what, are you in front of your computer, by the way? No, I'm just on the phone. Okay. Um, can you get to your computer? <laughs> oh, mind, do, you have access, do you have access to your email on your phone? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, here's what's going to happen. We're going to register you, but okay. you're not going to be registered until you get a message from us that says, okay, yep, I will, I'll accept. Push and, it. Okay. Okay. So, um, can we put in your email address first? Everyone yes. to know it here, but not you can't get it on the map. It's or you can put it secret. in the chat. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, I, I'm fine. So it's G C S E N F T. S E N F T. So G C S E N F T at gmail.com. Okay. And you're not in Mexico, but you're in Canada. Correct. Thank you for that. Okay. Okay, then here comes the, the most important thing, uh, I think, is uh, where, what state or region? Manitoba. Manitoba. Province. <laughs> Manitoba, <laughs> province. Uh huh. And, and then, the postal code is R5MOE7. I think it's a capital, R5. right? M. Yeah, R5. O -E. M uh, O E seven. It might be zero E seven. I'm not sure. Okay. And your name? And Gary. So Gary. Do you want Sam. your name to be shown? Yeah. Okay. Sure. You don't have to show your name if you don't want to, but Sam. And, and you certainly don't have to put in your phone number or any website or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you could come back and um and change this. But and change only, it later. Yeah. The only way you can change it, though, is to deregister because it's a safeguard. Because mm -hmm. if you could go in and do it, you know, after you've already posted. That means that somebody could really interfere and hack you. But this way they can't. You have to deregister to change anything. Okay. okay. There's a column there. And um, you might have to enlarge it, Merida, because I know I can't see it. Uh, I know it by heart, but this is your primary interest. Like, what is it that really drives your passion? And, you know, in your case, I know that it happens to be peace, I think, unless you've been trying to fool me for the last eight years or so. Uh, um, no, that's a, that's a good one if you have it. Yeah, we do. It's right there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just And say what hardest piece is, would it be peace education, conflict management, social responsibility? So it'd be conflict management, peace education, 
Um, Test no two, nuclear one yeah. here. Just one. No. Okay. I, I feel restricted, but I'm just kidding. Um, no, here so the second one is where we can choose as many as you want. So, mm -hmm. so we um, say peace education, and here we'll go, and I can do all of them if you want. Social responsibility, solidarity, no nuclear weapons, or any yeah. other relations. Yeah, and the, the bottom part, you know, we don't need it. I, I'm just good. You could stop at no nuclear weapons. Okay, great. And then you can take as many secondary interests as you like. You can mm -hmm. get involved with uh, social justice, restorative justice, uh, environment, climate, healthcare issues, uh, as many of the people on this call have an interest in. Um, mm -hmm. And so you could take your time in kind of, you know, looking at that. And in a minute or so, you'll see why it's important um, right. that, that you do take that time uh, right. and figure things out. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so I'll go for relations and peace. You can always deregister and redo it. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And then um, we're going to make an assumption here for you that you have already read the conditions and, and agreed to them and right. we're going to make you an okay um, and submit it. And so now this is where you're going to get notification. Mm -hmm. And once you uh, get that notification and accept, um, then you're going to get um, a pin mark uh, on the map. Somewhere up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so. Um, right in the middle. Yeah. We can. We can, Have you accepted? No. If you go to your email, you could accept it. So we yeah. see how it comes up. I'm a little technologically challenged, so I think okay. who's going well, to do that? That's okay. We can we can just keep going because but, but right right mm -hmm. at the bottom of right at the bottom of the middle lake there in the very center that's where I'll be. Okay, great. So okay. Uh, so let's look at the filter. This is the important thing. So Gary was into uh, his first primary passion was was peace. So we're going to filter for peace and do okay there. Um, so I was just going to do that, but there we go. Okay, so look what just happened. I mean, the map was filled with all kinds of pinpoints, but now when we filtered through and selected the same interests that Gary had, he can take a, a, a look at people who have the same kind of passion that he has. Then what, let's, let's take a look. There's somebody in India who has a passion for the same thing that Gary has. Okay, um, I can't read who it is, but let's say it's that- Mahima. I don't know who that is. So, um, mm -hmm. so let's select that person and let's look at the person in, I think, Portugal. And look what happens, uh, if you can see, when you select a person that has the same kind of passion, and then you can even look at their secondary passions, um, and when you select them, then you, they get a little red star. And so, okay, so Gary's gone through a number of people. Then the minute that you start selecting, look at the navigation bar and you see send an invitation. And so it's at this point, you can let them know that you have an idea that you want to explore. You have a program that you want others to learn about. Uh, you're doing some research and you want people to help you. Uh, and so any number of things, the only thing you can't do is sell. Uh, that's part of the terms that you agree to. You can't sell on this site. It's just like you help one another. And so you send people this request. It's the first time that they know because you're sending them an email who you are, but you don't know who's getting the email and they can ignore you. Or they can say, wow, there's this crazy guy up uh, in Winnipeg uh, that we'd like to get involved with. So he has this idea and we'd like to explore it. And so you sent, you return the message. So that's how the map of co-creators works. We really feel that, you know, if we want to give this map to everybody. So 
Gary, if you want to bring it to the peace organization, that's great. Donald, if you want to bring it to every healthcare organization you know, that's great. Uh, we don't. We just want people to use the map. We we want people mm -hmm. to find one another. It's really an important thing uh, to happen. Um, and mm -hmm. so you know, when you all are uh, free for a few moments, you might want to take a look at the map. There's a whole series of uh, a little tiny paragraph or two about the importance of the map and then how to use it in case, you know, we weren't clear enough in what we just did so that uh, you'll find it on under communities on the charter website. So that's, that's something that we've been up to. And I, I just want to say one other thing that we've been up to. We've been up to two things. One is the wisdom book. And, and I'm not going to talk about that, but I hope that you'll explore it. Because each of you today have talked about extraordinary ideas. And it would take probably a couple paragraphs to explain that idea and bring it into the wisdom book. Let us know what that project is, that program uh, is all about and we'll get it in the wisdom book and the only criteria for getting it in the wisdom book is that it's short uh, and that it's replicable so that your idea can be shared and given to other people so that they can make it in their own ilk. Um, they can put their own, uh, you know, signature on it. They can make the changes because it's a different culture or a different approach to doing things. So please take a look at that. But one of the, the last things I wanted to talk about is for the last year, we've been involved in a youth movement uh, because we really feel um, that it's important that youth begin to inherit the earth. Um, and so this past weekend, we had our first, what we call open uh, space technology. We had 178th youth who came uh, to a two day program. And um, what happens in open space technology is that people state what their concern is. And 178 people are not gonna state their concern. It's usually just a few people. Um, who say, you know, I'm really interested in uh, anti-nuclear weapons, or I'm interested more than likely in climate control. Um, but what happened this weekend is 178 registered people, young people, 120 of them chose to be in issues of risk management of healthcare, fear, anxiety, and stress. Uh, as you know, suicide rates are up around the world for young people. And think about the percentage. I, I'm not going to think about it right now, but 120, 178 registered. I mean, that is incredible when you think about this many people saying, you know, <laughs> this is where I am. And so we have a heavy responsibility. We're going to continue with our, our youth efforts uh, and you know, whoever um, you see who, you know, youth groups um, and different individual youth, uh, we, uh, we already have something up on the website. We're going to, you know, make it bigger and bolder. Uh, and we are more than likely going to have other open space meetings. They're really exciting technology to use. Uh, where you know you basically get people in small groups to talk to one another, form circles of trust, um, and so we really want help um, in really promoting the youth program. Uh, and also, the charter has just uh, in its bylaws uh, is indicating that 25% uh, of our board must be between the age of 18 and 35. And so we are also looking for, uh, we have a few nominees for those seats on the board of trustees. And so if you know of youth who are between 18 and 35, that would be great board members, um, please send them our way uh, so that we can vet them and introduce them to the process. So. Are there any questions? I know we only have a few minutes left. This coming Thursday, we 
we specifically have the Abnet for the youth collaborating for compassion. So that's uh, Thursday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. Pacific time. Yeah. And I'm putting that in here as well. So you can register for that. And if you don't manage to make it at that time, that does happen. Yeah, we can. will be sending a recording. And then the following month, we have, again, another youth program called Race for Good. And they've become, they are becoming a chartered partner uh, and very much a strategic partner. And we will be the fiscal sponsors of Race for Good. So um, I think you will really enjoy meeting Linda Cruz, who has been doing this work for 15 years. Um, and just, you know, find out about the program. There might be schools in your own community who want to, like right now, she's pulling together scholarship money for young people to go and um, go. Her next project is in Greenland, which means that youth from your community would wind up living and working for a period of uh, probably three to four months, uh, working with people in a community. It might be building wells. It might be building a structure like a, a library. In the case of what's happening in Greenland, it's working with people in communities who know that more than likely they have to either deal with reinforcing the area in which they live, building walls, uh, building waterways uh, so that the drain off of uh, Arctic melting uh, is not going to ruin their communities. So this is a wonderful opportunity for, for young people as well. So. Okay. And we could continue. Yeah, we see so much going on. Yeah. Yeah, and so please, please, um, you know, Don and Gary and Donald and Heather, <clears throat> Marge, we already know, has so much work to do uh, because we see her each week. Uh, and so she, she knows how to keep up with us. Uh, but we would really invite each one of you to be involved in one of our sectors or one of our programs. Um, and uh, you know, whenever you want to ask some more questions, we can, you know, one of us on staff can have um, an opportunity to talk with you via Zoom and invite you into the whole family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, much. for coming. Very good. Thank you. Good luck with everything and your computer problems, Marilyn. I, okay. I don't like you. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take care. And everyone. if you want to keep the chat, please remember to, to download oh, yeah. the chat Thank into you. your own computers because there's a lot of links there for you to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I got them. You. I got them all. That's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And I already found somebody in that map that's not far from me. Oh, great! Uh, who's interested in peace work. So I went to the there map thing while I was there, and there was a, a pin already there. <laughs> that's great. Right, that, right here, Barry. That's the fun thing when I go to these meetings. Somebody will say, "I just made contact with somebody on the map." That's so exciting to hear. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, okay, everybody. Thanks. Good to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, yeah, it was a Bye -bye. pleasure meeting everyone. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye.